So all we do is suspension and brake. We just specialise in that area, so if that's the stuff that we look after and that's the stuff that we specialise in. Get your game face on. Get your game face on. Welcome to the Get AFL Outer East Premier Division face footy face show. On. Coming to you from Studio B, Game Face Central in Dandenong. Hello there. I'm Dan Lonigan, and with me is the coach. G'day, coach. G'day, Dan. Headlines go straight into a please, mate. You know. Yes, you're the boss, of course. Okay. Even though you're on the air today, you're also the executive producer. And Nick's so behind me. What camera. to do? Yeah, Nick's looking after us. G'day, Nick. Nary Warren kicked five goals to two in the last term to overrun Wandon in an entertaining high-scoring game at Wandon. And Matt Fodia, who is the media manager of AFL Outer East, who called that game, said it was the best game he's seen, even though he also called the Berwick Wandon high scoring encounter early in the year as well. We'll talk about that. Well, that would have been at the time. Probably. Would have been the best game he's seen. Now, this is the best game he's seen now. Now, the best game he's seen now. Well, fantastic. Beaconsfield returns to the winner's list and enhance an already healthy percentage. Cranbourne back in the top five after belting Hillsville. And Wurri Yellick, no match for the league leader and premiership favourite, Berwick, who continue to keep on keeping on. Checking the results, Beaconsfield, 17-22, 1-2-4. After losing two in a row, we had their, one of their key players, Nick McPherson, and also their coach, Lee McQuillan, on the footy show last week. And I'm sure by being here, that's pumped Beaky up to have a big win. I was very won by 98 points. Very, very good, weren't they? Very, very good. Very impressed with the coach. Uh, 3 6 So they've won actually by 100 points. 17-22, 1-2-4 to 3 6 Wandon, 19-8, 1-2-2. Defeated by Nary Warren. 39 scoring shots to 27. Nary, 18-21, 1-2-9. 37 goals in that match. Wurri Yalek, 5-9-39. No match for Berwick. 15-13, 1-0-3. And Cranbourne, 17-18, 120, defeated Hillsville, 4-8-32. And Alinda Fernie Creek, not Officer Fernie Creek, Alinda Fernie Creek. I always tend to get them a little bit confused, but Alinda Fernie Creek had the bye. As we check the matches, coach, and Beaconsfield, a good result for them. Uh, Matt Johnson kicked nine, had an outstanding day after dropping their previous two. They had to get back on the winner's list, and it really has been a disappointing end to the season for Upway Tacoma. It has, but we, we know what's going on at Upway Tacoma. They're, they are aggressively looking to recruit. Um, they're realistic, aren't yeah, they? Yeah, they're realistic, and they were one of the clubs that told me that they told us, actually, Dan, that they know now what standard they need to be at to at least stay with uh, the, uh, the former Sethnal clubs for longer periods in the game. They can stay with them in the first quarter. I think I can't remember which game it was. I was there in the first quarter. It might have been against Berwick or someone like that. I can't remember. They were actually um, hanging in there and they were ahead in that mm. first quarter. It was against Berwick, yes. But then, of course, bang, they got overtaken. So. They've had a lot of injuries too, which and didn't help have. them. And yeah. the, the Hillsville match was a prime example of that. They're missing a number of key players and they were on top for three quarters and Hillsville found a way to get over the line then. That day, and that was a, a really good close contest. But uh, they've obviously got some work to do. But Beaky needed to win. We know how good their percentage is. Uh, they just need to beat the teams above them on a more regular basis. We know they've beat Nary Warren, but they would have been disappointed. They allowed Wanda to overrun them, and then Berwick, uh, they were no match for them last week. So they'll be in the finals. Whether they can get any higher than top four remains to be seen. But that was a good win on the weekend. Yeah, I, I'm pleased with the way they're travelling. I think their coach is still at this stage. Yeah, he's going really well, Lee. And, it's, and their club's also making great progress with all those good young players as well. Nary Warren, well, what a game of footy this was. As Matt Fodia said, the media manager of AFL Outer East, and he called this game, he said it was an absolute cracker. Just having a look at the game, I mean, Wandon have kicked 10 goals, and we know it's a small ground. At halftime, they trailed by 21 points. It was Nary Warren coach 10-10-70 to Wandon 7-7-49. Nary had kicked seven goals to three in the first quarter, even second quarter, and then Wandon got on their bike and kicked 10-1 to 3-4, to open up an 18-point lead at three-quarter time before Nary kicked five goals, seven to two straight in the last quarter, including the last goal of the match, which Matt said is one of the best goals he's ever seen. And they've got over the line to win by seven points. As I say, 18-21, 1-2-9. Probably should have won by more, but bad kicking's bad footy, and I'm sure uh, Matt Shinners and the rest of the coaching staff at Magpie Land would realise that. 19-8, 122. The highlight again was Daniel Jackson, his second six-goal all in a row. 
He's been magnificent for them this year. Colin McNamara came back at the halfway mark of the year to play football for the club again. He's been superb since returning. So they'd be happy with that win. Uh, they'll be playing on bigger grounds in the finals. Wandon again just falling a bit short and their percentage is not great. But, uh, gee, it would have been a wonderful game of footy to see all those goals kicked. Surprising was it, was it windy because if they only kicked, uh, well, well, well Nary kicked seven and, and Wandon didn't do much in that last quarter. Was it windy? Do you know what oh, I'm windy? not sure. I, I haven't been able to get that information. But uh, you would think by the third quarter effort that, it was, that the wind was favouring the end that Wandon were kicking, but we know it's a very small ground, and we know Wandon played that ground so well, but in the last quarter, Nary maybe a little bit That's more That's a surprising class. result, especially when, uh, you know, I, I think Wandon have been playing some decent footy, especially up there on their mm. own ground, but that's not a good result for them because now they're starting to look pretty shaky on the outskirts of the, on the edges. And they have the a poor percentage, under yeah, eight. Yeah, so they, they need to get, uh, to get cracking if they want to assure themselves of a place uh, in September. Well, having said that, Cranbourne and Worry drew, so it's not going to really have an impact on their percentage because they've Might got, be another got an draw. extra two points here. Well, if, if they get a draw Could be another in the draw. last couple of matches, yeah. it'll be I'll interesting to see uh, what will happen to didn't them. Didn't think it, about that, did yeah, you? But at the moment, you know, there could be another draw. Yeah. And if it does it go that way, it'd be or wonderful for the competition. Even. A tie or a draw, whichever way you look at it is uh, fantastic, Coach. Remember, we're trying to come up with different words. So a draw... And a tie it means the same, of course, in footy, but, but doesn't not mean in the cri- same in cricket. We're talking about cricket, great win by the Aussies. Oh, they great win, wasn't it fantastic? Yeah, yeah, I just loved it. Steve Smith, one it. of the superstars. And, 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 and just quickly on the cricket, I know mm. we're talking footy, but a lot of footy people love cricket. Um, how tough is it going to be for the Poms? Because they now go, oh, well, uh, well, the Aussies bowled well, but, you know, we had a couple of guys down. Well, the Australians still have Stark and Hazelwood if they want to bring them back in, which Correct. they will for the Lord's Test. But anyway, that's just... They'll me. keep the... Oh, I think Stark will come in. He'll come in for Siddle. And I think that Bancroft is very lucky to still be there, but I think that he will play mm. because uh, Justin Langer loved him and he would want to change a batting lineup, which didn't really fire. And Warner, he just needs to play the way Warner normally plays. He went into his shell a bit. But anyway, that's S- for another day. That's next week. We can talk about it uh, in next week's show because the Test match won't start till um, after next week's show as well. Anyway... Uh, Berwick, 15, 13, 103, again, very solid. Too good for Wurri Yellick, 5, 9, 39. Just indicating there's a, a fair bit of difference between Berwick and Wurri Yellick. It's pretty close between Berwick and Nary Warren. I still think they're the two best teams, but uh, Wurri still a chance of finishing top three. And uh, look, they've had a pretty solid year, but it indicates they've got a bit of work to do to, to try and take it up to Berwick, who are a very accomplished team. S- same old story, Berwick just keep keep on winning, don't, don't they, no matter where they are. Having said that, and the people in the know in the former Yarra Rangers, well, it's still Yarra Rangers, well, yeah, former Yarra Rangers comp, but it's still out there in the Yarra Rangers, is that Wurriella get themselves right for finals. They do. They, they just have a knack. They don't have a hell of a lot to choose from, but their top 25 or whatever are really good. And we all know uh, how well they play on their own ground. OK, they got beaten there. But come finals time, they will be ready and ripe and ready to go. So any of those other teams above them or around them think that uh, that result means anything. I don't think it means anything at all. And Brian Jack Cole's a very experienced coach. Yeah, he has a lot knows. of experience in the Northern yeah. Footy League with Greensboro, which is a very well-known football club uh, and a very successful football club in suburban Melbourne. And uh, he went to Hillsville, coached them to a premiership as well. So... Uh, It'll be interesting how he goes with this team who've got a bit of work to do, as I say, to keep up with the top two. Cranbourne found a way to win. 17-18-120. Hillsville 4-8-32. Hillsville can't wait for the season to win. It looks like they'll be going down to uh, Division 1 next year. Linda, of course, as we mentioned, had the bye. As we take a look now at the team of the week. Again, I put this team together. I do enjoy doing these. Uh, it's, a, it's a great challenge and I'd love to, again, get input from people who know more about the competition than I ever will. Uh, obviously, you'd love all the, all the good thoughts to come in, but uh, more than happy with negative thoughts as well about uh, players that I've left out. I'm sure there are quite a few a bit unlucky not to be in this team, but you can go on to the Game Face Facebook on the Outer East page and uh, certainly put your views there. Now, the back line, Morris of Cranbourne, Michael Batten seems to be in there every week from Wurri Yalik, Burgess of Berwick. The half-back line, Dempster, very reliable player from Nary Warren, Derbyshire from Cranbourne, and Magna, the former Melbourne AFL player, Berwick. 
Uh, Jellyman Turner from Berwick on the wing row. Duggan from Hillsville was uh, clearly their best player. He's in the centre. O'Sullivan from Beaconsfield on the wing, having a, a terrific season, was on the bench last week despite his team losing. Half forward line, the veteran Colin McNamara from Narry Warren. Uh, Van Noonan from Wandon after kicking seven to join Harry Money at the top of the goal kicking table. Harry Money from Berwick on 46 goals. Matthews, pretty good for his team despite the loss from Wuri Yalik. Forward line, Johnson kicked nine for Beaconsfield. Dan Jackson from Narry Warren, his second six-goal haul, as mentioned. And Hodgett from Wandon. The Ruckman, he's always there, isn't he? Zach Monkhurst, the son of Damien, uh, the big Ruckman from Wuri Yalik. Andrews, that's Matty Andrews from Berwick. And Lawler Labato from Cranbourne. And Interchange, Grinda from Upway. Gentilly from Narry Warren. Griffiths from Beaconsfield and James from Wandon. So I reckon that's a pretty good team. Good team. One question, and I'm not mm. correcting you, Dan, so don't get upset at me, because a lot of people say that name. I believe incorrectly. It's Monk Horst, isn't it? People say Monk Hurst, but it's actually Monk Horst. Everyone, H -O everyone just calls I should just say Zach Monkey, shouldn't I? Because yeah. everyone calls him Monkey. Yeah, probably politically incorrect to say that. But um, Monk, Monk... That's his nickname. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No. Oh, I know, I know where you're coming from. Yeah, you know yeah. where I'm coming from. Yeah, but what, I'm, what I'm saying is... You know how everybody said, even when, when his dad was playing AFL football, people still said Monkhurst. It's Monkhurst. Anyway, let's ask them. We'll do that. Why not? It's just a little thing. I like names to be correct, that's all. Now, just uh, dotting the I's and crossing the T's, it was Aaron Grender. There were two Grenders that played for up by Tacoma. Yeah. It was Aaron Grender who was on the interchange bench. Now, the latter, Berwick still a game clear of Nari Warren at the top. And they're playing wonderful footy, Berwick. And that loss early in the season was to Wandon in that high-scoring encounter. But as we mentioned, Coach, they're going to be very, very hard to beat. Their percentage is 241.23. Now, Nary with a good percentage of 199.39, again behind them. And then a two-and-a-half game break to Wuri Yalik on 38 points, but a poor percentage, 96.35. Beaconsfield are two points behind them and can still finish top three because of their whopping... Magnificent percentage with three games to go, 161.86. And then Cranbourne making up the top five. They've jumped over Wandon, two points ahead of them with a percentage of 138.23. And we know Wandon's percentage on 28 points is a concern. It's been a concern all year, 78.09. Even Alinda have a better percentage and they're one game behind Wandon and they're on 81.80. And the bottom two up way Tacoma on 16 points and Hillsville on eight points. We, we, before we go, go mm. ahead, I should say, wh where do you see the finals? Who, who, do you who do you see is going to be in or out? I mean, the top three or four are probably... It's, it's that last spot, isn't it? It is. I think that, uh, look, Cranbourne have got Berwick this week, and that's going to be a massive game for them at Berwick. I couldn't see them winning that. Uh, so it'll all depend on what Wandon is, is able to do. I mean, uh, they're playing up late to Coma, so you think they can win that? They'll win that. And it'll all go down to the last game, which is wonderful for the competition. Yeah, it's been drawn great. out, yeah. but it's been, we, we talked earlier about Division 2 and the fact that it'll go right down to the wire to decide the top five. We still don't know who's going to uh, get the double chance in Division 1. We think the top five's, well, it's been decided for a long time, but uh, Doveton now a little bit shaky and Mount Evelyn are coming. And obviously in the Premier competition, it'll go right down to the last game as to who will finish top five, and that's exactly what we want. And still, with a, even though, of course, they've got that draw, which will help them, Wurri Alec, their percentage is not great, and we know that Beaconsfield... Um, have been playing some pretty good footy and they're still a good chance of finishing top three as well. So that's exactly what the league wants. Exactly. So we look forward to that. And I, I just think come finals time, anything's possible. You'll see a f few surprises in finals. That's what we need. That's yeah, what we need. What's happening this week? Well, Alinda, they're hosting Beaconsfield. Um, so that should be a very interesting game. Beaconsfield know that, as I say, they need to keep winning. They will. If they want to finish top three, I think they will. They've yep. been pretty good against most teams this year. Again, it's just the, the top two. I know they beat Nary Warren. Just a, a couple of teams have been a bit too good for them. But generally, I think their performance has been outstanding. And as I say, we keep talking about their percentage. When they've beaten teams, they've thrashed them. Mm. And when they've lost, they haven't lost by a great deal. So I expect them to beat Alinda and stay in the race for top three. Upway Tacoma hosting Wandon. Wandon, they just need to win. Or they'll beat them. They will beat them comfortably, I would have thought. Uh, Berwick and Cranbourne, two teams that know each other very, very well, played against each other for years and years and years. And we know that 
They know how to win premierships, particularly Berwick in recent years, having won the last two flags in the Stefano and Cranbourne, one under Simon Goosey, now coaching Mornington before that. So uh, they've had a lot of success over the years, but Cranbourne, not the team they have been, and I would think Berwick would be too strong for them. Yeah, Berwick. And Hillsville hosting Wurri Alec, and uh, this is, of course, Jack Cole's old team, who he coached to their last premiership, Hillsville, now coaching Wurri Alec, and uh, Wurri Alec know that the finals were around the corner. Top three is still something uh, yeah. they would love to finish and, and get a double chance in the final. So they just want to make sure they put some space between themselves and Hillsville. And Nary Warren get a bye with a couple of weeks left before the finals. Won't be a game. It'll be a shame, Wurri Alec. Absolutely. Easy. Anything else you want to talk about, Coach, before we go? It's been... I just want to um, yeah. say one thing. We touched on it before about the, you know, the naysayers that said that this competition is, is too much of a divide between the top and the bottom teams. Have mm. a look at most competitions. And here at Game Face, we cover the Southern Foot Football Netball League. Uh, we also do, uh, of course, we're doing Outer East, and we also do Mornington uh, Peninsula Net Netball Football League, MP NFL. <laughs> we used to always get that confused. <laughs> uh, but it's the same thing, uh, not in every comp, but if you look in some of those divisions, there's just some teams that are just so much better than other teams. And a lot of those comps, especially Southern's been going for a long, long time. You have a look at Eastern, I've been looking at some of their scores as well, and they've got five divisions, I think. They do. Um, it's going to happen. There's teams that are good, there's teams that aren't good. Yes, it's up to the league to try and, I suppose, equalise that competition. <laughs> but it all boils down to people. Sometimes you have better people, harder-working people at certain clubs. Now, I'm not saying the teams that aren't doing well don't have hard-working people. But sometimes, in the end, that's how it works. Better run clubs sometimes are better run off the field, but they don't do so well on the field. And in the end, some clubs concentrate and focus on getting their off-field side right then the playing side will come along with it. Other, other clubs just want to get their playing right and they do it the other way. It's, it's everybody's uh, different strokes for different folks. But I think overall this has been a pretty successful year. So. Oh, and, and I think the Outer East officials will be delighted because, as I said, we're going to go to the last round of the season in all three divisions in regard to deciding where everyone sits for final spots. Yes. And that's exactly what we want. And uh, you brought up an interesting point, Coach, about clubs trying to get their, their off-field situation right. I was speaking to a guy who's president of Sandhurst in the Bendigo League, very famous football club, and his son plays at the Western Bulldogs. And this guy's name is Chris Green. And Chris was telling me that the new president of Castlemaine, and they've been struggling for quite a while, town, for those that don't know, between Kyneton and Bendigo, mm. uh, near central Victoria, and they were a famous footy club in the 90s and 2000s, but haven't had much success for a long time. And he took over as president, and he rang Chris, and he said, what's going to be the most important thing for me to improve this club, he said, you've got to get the off-field right. You've got to make sure everyone's happy. The netballers are happy, the junior footballers are happy, and then you work on the senior team. Mm. And they're still getting beaten comfortably, but off-field they're getting a lot better now. They've got a bit more money in the bank, and that's what it's all about. And, it, and I think if you do that, you can then start having some success on the field. And I know Upway Tacoma are very strong off the field, and they're working very hard now, having seen, as you said earlier, Coach, what, they what they've to got to contend with yeah. next year they'll come out bigger and better because they'll be obviously targeting what they require in the field. Just quickly, because I know we've got to wrap it up, but Nick's starting to get a little bit of a bead of sweat down his right eye. He's, hungry, see too, that he's hungry too. You can yeah. hear his stomach going from here. Um, one club <laughs> that have done, that did exactly that, Richmond. Remember, not yeah. that long ago, they were walking around the streets rattling tin cans, saying, we need money. And now, Nick, you won't remember this. You probably weren't even born, but I can remember Years ago, when both you and I were working at uh, Fox in St Kilda Road, yeah, Fox yeah, FM, they and they were str that was in the 90s, was yeah, it the 90s? 90s? And they're walking around with tin cans shaking it, and I, out of protest, said, well, look, if you can't get your act together, I'm not going to give you any money. I mean, I was pretty tough, I know, but oh. I'm an Essendon supporter, I wasn't going to give Richmond any money. Um, whereas now I love the Tigers because they got rid of a whole bunch of dead wood and they said, we've got to get this. That club was a basket case. Was. It yeah. was a basket Look case. Look at Footscray the end of 89. Yeah. They just celebrated the 30-year anniversary yeah. of their fight back. Exactly. And they got their act together. Richmond, not Richmond, Hawthorne almost merged with um, Melbourne. Melbourne, in that close. So there are precedents here. And it doesn't matter whether it's AFL or whether it's NFL or whether it's A-League or NRL. It can be the same in the Outer East anywhere. Get your act together, you're right, off the field, and the players will come. And, I mean, the officials have always said, the board has said that it'll take a couple of years for everyone to it, work it, it out. It will. And it's just starting to work itself out now, which is fantastic. Well, that's it for this week's Outer East Premier Division footy show. 
I hope you've enjoyed it. And of course, it comes every week from Studio B, Game Face Central. We'll see you next week. Enjoy your footy and always get your game face on. Get your game face on.